Hi there, this week we announced uh, the new Governor General for New Zealand, that is Lieutenant General <coughs> Jerry Mataparai. Uh, Jerry uh, comes to the role uh, with a stellar uh, history uh, in the armed forces, 38 years in the military, ending as the Chief of Defence Force before he most recently took up his job as the Head of the Intelligence Agency, GCSB. Jerry's a very fine New Zealander. He'll bring tremendous attributes to the job, including real sympathy, empathy, and compassion for New Zealanders. And I think we'll do a tremendous job, along with his wife, uh, Janine, for, as being the next Governor General for New Zealand. While we're at it, can I thank um, Sir Anand Sachinan, uh, the current Governor General of New Zealand, and his wife, Lady Susan, for all their work in the last five years. We also announced this week that on March the 18th uh, we'll be holding a memorial service in Christchurch uh, to commemorate those that lost their lives in the Christchurch earthquake of February the 22nd and also uh, to recognise uh, the hardship that all Cantabrians are suffering as we go through the rebuilding process now of Christchurch. I was delighted to be informed that uh, Prince William will be coming out and representing the Queen. I know that uh, Cantabrians will be touched by the fact that he's taken the opportunity to travel such a long way to New Zealand and to be part of that very important service. He'll also be travelling over to Pike River uh, to see the families of the Pike River disaster and I know that will be a, a special and important moment for them. Uh, two weeks on, you'll appreciate it's been a very busy time for the government uh, post the earthquake. There's a lot of work happening. Uh, we're very conscious of the fact that uh, a lot of Cantabrians are living without basic core infrastructure. Uh, while power has just recently restored, uh, many Cantabrians still don't have water uh, and sewage facilities. The government's working as hard as it can uh, to have those services brought back online and also to provide alternatives. I do want to take this opportunity to thank those who are working day and night to restore those critical services. Uh, we appreciate all the work uh, that you're doing. It's going to be um, a big task in front of us. We know after the first earthquake on September the 4th that the EQC uh, Geotechnical advisors believed that 3,500 homes would have to be destroyed and up to 8,000 homes had sustained damage in, in excess of $100,000. The early indications from the geotechnical advisors at EQC is that uh, 10,000 homes may need to be uh, demolished. Um, some will be able to be rebuilt on their current land once that's been remediated, others will not. Uh, we're currently working through those issues and getting a better understanding of that geotechnical advice. And when we have that uh, information, I give my word to the people of Christchurch that will share that information with them along with um, any alternatives that might flow from that as they go about making decisions and about rebuilding their homes and ultimately rebuilding their lives. So to everyone that's uh, been working so hard in the earthquake, thank you very much uh, for what you're doing. We've got had people from right around the country and in fact right around the world supporting us. And finally, the government is reaching out trying to raise money. For the people of Christchurch, we have a worldwide fund. Uh, you can contribute if you want to through our website, www.christchurchearthquakeappeal.govt.nz, or by texting 933 from your phone, um, putting in CHCH. Uh, that'll take $3 out of your mobile phone account or going onto Facebook. So please give generously. We want to use that money to support families, uh, communities, uh, clubs. Uh, and potentially small businesses who have suffered so badly from the earthquake. Um, no donation is too small and every donation will make a difference uh, to restoring both the confidence and the livelihoods of those that call Christchurch home.